Hi, we're here to talk about discounted payback period and how to calculate it. We've got two projects to evaluate, Lori's project and Sean's project. Ooh, we've got some answers here that we need to get rid of. All right, so first thing we need to do is uh, talk about why we're using discounted payback period, and that's to take into account the time value of money. To do this, we need to calculate the present value of the future cash flows and the out in the upcoming four years for each of these projects. To do that, we simply use our present value formula. We know our rate. We're going to use 5%, which is 0.05. The number of the period, the year in which the cash flow is happening, we're going to pick up from um, B7 as a formula. We hit comma, and that moves us on to payment. In this case, payment is zero because we're not doing an equal stream of payments. We're doing individual future value calculations. The future value goes in as a negative number, and we know that because Excel is asking us to put it in as a negative number by showing us it in brackets. And we're going to simply refer to column C to pick that up for this row. And now we're going to take a look at our formula, 5% relative cell reference to B7, 0 is our payment, and negative C7 is our future value. That looks good. Now we've got a f present value for that cash flow. Because we made it a nice formula that is relative to each row that it's in, we can go ahead and copy that, which is great. And let, now let's do it for Sean's. In Sean's case, we're going to do equals PV and our rate is 0.05. The number of periods we're going to pick up as a relative, uh, as a cell reference. The payment is zero. And again, our future value is going to go in as a negative number and as a cell reference. We're going to close our parenthesis, double take a moment to double check our formula. Looks good. Hit return. And we're going to be able to copy that one down as well which is great. So now we know what the present value of the cash flows that we're going to get from each of these projects is. The next question is, should we go ahead with the project? Well, we in order to do payback period, we have to figure out how long it takes us to recover our money. In this case, we need to recover $60,000 for Lori's project and $84,000 for Sean's project. So for Lori's project, we're going to pick up that we, we're recovering $60,000. We need $60,000. We're going to subtract the 24000 that we got. We only have 35000 left to recover. And so the number of the amount of time it took, I'm going to make a whole new column, takes, wrap that text. So it took that whole year's worth of cash flow. In this case, we're going to go up. And we've got $35,000 to recover. We can subtract the $29,000 that we're getting in year two. And we've only got $5,000 left to recover. But we need to mark down that we used up all of that year's cash flow. Now, as you'll recall uh, from a video about the payback period, whenever we get to an amount left to recover that is less than the amount that's coming in in the next cash flow year, we simply take the number that we need to recover and divide it by the amount that's coming in. And that will give us the percent or, or the fraction of the year that we need of cash flow, of discounted cash flow. And why it came out as a dollar sign, one never knows. But we'll fix that. And now we know that it's going to take, auto sum that, it's going to take 2.279205 years, 2.28 years. We can, get rid of a few decimal points and make it look right. So it's going to be 2.28 years for us to recover the investment on Lori's project. If the cutoff period is three years, it's a go. We're going to go ahead and do the project because 2.28 is less than three. However, if the company's cutoff period was two years, we would not be doing this project. And that would be sad because this was a very nice cash flow in year four that we would be missing out on. Let's take a look at Sean's project and see how it works out. First of all, we're going to pick up the amount we need to cover minus the cash flow from the first year, and we're down to $35,000 that needs to be recovered. Again, we pick up the amount that we need to recover minus the amount that we're going to get in that year, and we get just $5,496.60 left to recover. It, that is less than the amount of time, amount of money discounted that we're going to get in year three. So let's go ahead and keep a tally of how many years we used. We used all of year one, we used all of year two, and here we're going to take 
the amount that we need to recover divided by the amount that's coming in, the present value of the amount that's coming in in year three. Hit return and that's 35. We're going to make that a decimal point. And again, we're going to auto sum it. And we find that it takes 2.35 years for us to recover uh, the, the investment. Oops, I'm going to shorten that up. 2.35 years to recover the investment in Sean's project. In both cases, if the cutoff period is three years, we're going to do it. But if it's two years, we're not going to do it. And that's it for discounted payback period.